Hi! Welcome back to Shotoku Tech. In my previous video, newest Helltech ESP32 LoRa Information 2023, we found the latest location of the Helltech docs, especially the latest uh, board manager URL for Arduino IDE. That comes in handy when you're trying to load the board definitions for these ESP32 LoRa boards. I got so excited after that, I went on Amazon and bought the latest Helltech ESP32 LoRa Wi-Fi version 3. And, you know, I'm making a video about that and I'm wondering, you know, what's going to be the best bandwidth for the range? And so let's go ahead and do a chat search here on Bang. Okay, what is the best bandwidth for 915 megahertz LoRa? Okay, it depends on the application and the environment. Higher bandwidth has higher data rates and is more power efficient, but has more congestion and less range. Let's check out these articles here. I want to go with this one. Yes, I like this article. I found this one using a manual search, so <laughs> I'm, I'm testing AI searches to see, you know, because I always thought my Google Foo was pretty good, and I'm, so I'm checking myself against the chat search. It seems, I'd still think, I still think my search phrases are just as good. Okay, so let's realize there's differences in each country regarding restrictions of LoRa, and that's summarized on this here. Yeah, so in North America, use 915 megahertz. In Europe, use 868 regulated organizations. Transmission time in the United States, you can't have a single transmission over 400 milliseconds. Payload sizes range from 11 to 242 bytes. Spread factors between 7 and 10. Data rates between 1 and 12.5 kbps. Maximum transmit power, 21 decibels. Let's go down here. This is interesting. So the spreading factor affects the transmission rate and the payload size. So the lower the spreading factor, the higher the data transmission rate and the larger the payload. We're going to talk more about spreading factor when we go back to this article. Okay, and they also have Semtex SX1272 calculator. So I'm going to click here. I'll show you the link. I've already installed it, so... All of the links will be in the description down below. Scrolling, yeah, see right there, SX1272 LoRa calculator. I'm just going to pop this open here. We'll play around with this in a minute. Let's see. I'm going to just set it to the defaults that I normally see in Arduino example sketches. Okay, let's go back to our article now. Yeah, more about the calculator. The following two are the most important and least understood range determinants. Spreading factor. Okay. LoRa converts symbols, binary data, to chirp signals that span the frequency range. The chirp time equals symbol time is roughly proportional to two times the spreading factor. Each step up in the spreading factor doubles the time on air to transmit the symbol. Each unit in spread factor correlates to about 2.5 decibels of extra link budget. So link budget is essentially how much power you have to transmit with. Higher spreading factors are more resistant to local noise effects and will be read more reliably at the cost of lower data rate and more congestion. Okay, so bandwidth, the chirp will cover this bandwidth. Higher bandwidth has higher data rates and is more power efficient, but has more congestion and less range. Each doubling of bandwidth correlates to almost a 3 decibel less link budget. Let's see, we'll play with the calculator in a minute here. Now, so there's an allowed frequency vari variation here. That's what this graph is. And they say down here, frequency tolerances of typically 25% of the LoRa modulation bandwidth can be withstood and still maintain a 10% PER link. 
So this is your plus or minus 25% of that particular frequency. And you can see the it drops off significantly when you're outside of that. Getting the longest range. The software way to get the longest range is by maximizing the link budget. And you do that by using the lowest possible bandwidth and the highest possible spreading factor. Decreasing bandwidth increases the risk of miscommunication due to frequency drift and inaccuracy. Okay, and of course, like we said, these settings also affect the data rate. Now here's the code rate analysis. Now CRC, basically that's the uh, check to determine that did you get the packet and is it correct. So this coding rate, increasing this coding rate has some overhead, but what it does is it makes your transmission more accurate. Rule of thumb. So reading through all of this, to simplify and summarize, we could say minimize bandwidth, maximize spreading factor to boost the link budget, and then maximize the coding rate to boost reliability. Okay, this is talking about temperature stability, so higher temperatures are going to yield less stability. Okay, we've reached the end of the line there. Let's go ahead and pop out this calculator and play around with it a little bit. So most example sketches I see have a spread factor of 7, bandwidth is 125, code rate is 1. We've set the frequency here to 915 and the transmit power in example sketches is usually around 14. Now they said we could go to a maximum of 21. Here's link budget down here on the lower right. You also want to watch the bit rate and the time on air as we change these. First of all, I'm going to boost the power up to 17. 16, 17. That gets us a link budget of 140 decibels. Okay, I'm going to leave the bandwidth at 125. That's the lowest you can set on the Helltech ESP32 LoRa board. Spread factor, this is 7. That's the lowest available that I've seen as well. But I'm going to go ahead and pop that up to 9. Again, that's going to reduce our packet size and our data rate. Let's look at what spread factor 9. 53 byte packet and 1.76 kbps. So if we're just sending a very small message, I think we should be able to fit it within 53 bytes and it's going to significantly improve. Let's go back. Yes, yeah, so you were up to 146 and let's change our coding rate. Now watch what happens with coding rate. So equivalent bit rate right now is 1757 uh, was that bits per second <laughs> and the time on air is 115 milliseconds so let's change our coding rate to 2 1400 bps 123 milliseconds at, on time on air 3 1200 bps time on air is 132 milliseconds and number 4 Still over 1K BPS, time on air is 140 milliseconds. So oh, it seems like these, this calculator gives you the opportunity to optimize that. The energy profile here is if you were to intermittently sleep your device and then wake it up and then transmit something every so often. Yeah, here's the estimated battery life of a 1,000 milliamp uh, battery would be 1300 days. That's waking up every couple of seconds and transmitting something according to these settings that we have here. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> anyway, well, I hope you learned something new. Leave a comment down below if you did. Give this video a like and before you go watch more of my Laura videos on my channel, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.